Today, most countries that use the death penalty as part of their criminal justice systems offer some sort of last meal. Along with the United States, Japan and South Korea are the only industrialized democracies among the 58 countries in the world that employ capital punishment, and in Japan, the condemned don't know when they will be executed until the day arrives. No matter your stance on capital punishment, eating and dying are universal and densely symbolic human processes. Death eludes the living, and we are drawn to anything that offers the possibility of glimpsing the undiscovered country. If, as the French epicure and film Brillat Savarine suggested, we are what we eat, then a final meal would seem to be the ultimate self-expression. There is added titillation when that expression comes from the likes of Timothy McVeigh or Ted Bundy, who declined a special meal and was served steak, eggs, hash browns, toast, milk, coffee, juice, butter, and jelly. And when this combination of factors is set against America's already fraught relationship with food, supersized or slow, and with weight and weight loss. A condemned prisoner's last meal is a customary ritual preceding execution. In many countries, the prisoner may, within reason, select what the last meal will be. While most people believe the ritual of the last meal originated with the last meal of Jesus, the tradition can be traced back to a fear of ghosts in pre-Christian times. In ancient Greece, you had to feed the person who was going to be executed, so that they could cross the river into the underworld, and not come back as a hungry ghost. Over the course of human history, the tradition of last meal evolved. The Puritans of Massachusetts once held grand feasts for the condemned, believing it emulated the Last Supper of Christ representing a communal atonement for the community and the prisoner. In the United States, most states give the meal a day or two before execution and use the euphemism special meal. Alcohol or tobacco are usually, but not always, denied. Unorthodox or unavailable requests are replaced with similar substitutes. Some states place tight restrictions. In Florida, the food for the last meal must be purchased locally and the cost is limited to $40. Oklahoma, the cost is limited to $25. In Louisiana, the prison warden traditionally joins the condemned prisoner for the last meal. On one occasion, the warden paid for an inmate's lobster dinner. Sometimes, a prisoner asks to share the last meal with another inmate or has the meal distributed among other inmates. In September 2011, the state of Texas abolished all special last meal requests after a condemned prisoner and white supremacist Lawrence Russell Brewer requested a large and expensive last meal, but did not eat any of it, stating that he was not hungry. The tradition of customized last meals is thought to have been established around 1924 in Texas. There's little information on just how many death row inmates eat their last meal. But there are a number of well-documented instances where an inmate refused to eat the last meal that was offered to them. At a certain rational level, Declination of the last meal makes sense since unless there is a late, unexpected pardon there is no biological need for energy. One of the most bizarre last meals was requested by James Edward Smith. His case garnered attention due to his unusual last meal request, a lump of dirt. Born on October 19, 1952, in Jefferson County. Kentucky. James Edward Smith, worked as a tarot card dealer in New Orleans, Louisiana, 
and later went to work as a taxi driver in Houston, Texas. Smith fatally shot insurance executive Larry D. Rois during a robbery inside a second-floor cashier's office near the Astrodome on March 7, 1983. On the afternoon of March 7, 1983, James Edward Smith entered the office of the Union Life Insurance Company armed and masked. He approached the window where Deborah Renee Wilson was counting money from the cash drawer. Smith aimed and cocked his gun and demanded Wilson to give him all of the money. In a state of panic she ran behind the file cabinet. Larry Don Rois then proceeded to the window and handed Smith the money. He turned around, walked toward Wilson, and was ordered back to the window by Smith. Rois began to plea for his life, but Smith was not satisfied. He shot Rois in the upper left side of his chest, which eventually killed him. Smith began to flee the building, but was tackled by an office worker a work crew, and a businessman in a nearby parking lot. Smith, a former tarot card dealer in New Orleans working as a Houston taxi driver, was convicted of the capital murder of Larry Rois. Smith was sentenced to death by lethal injection. He waived his final appeals, but four U.S. Supreme Court justices decided there was serious doubt about Smith's mental competency to make such a decision. Under court rules, four votes is enough to order a formal review of the case. The justices were one vote shy of halting the execution, however, prompting Justice William J. Brennan Jr. to decry, for the first time in recent memory. A man will be executed after the court has decided to hear his claim. Six hours before he was to be executed, Smith's mother, Alexine Hamilton, won her son a reprieve from the U.S. Supreme Court. She claimed Smith suffered from mental problems and was not competent enough to waive his own appeal. Despite his mother's attempt to delay his execution, Smith insisted he was ready to die. He claimed he wanted to leave the material world and return to the spiritual world. He repeatedly claimed he was innocent, but he didn't want to spend the rest of his life on death row. He resisted all attempts for legal help because he saw no hope that the courts would overturn his execution. He simply fought for his right to die. Smith's mother recalled that he was a loving and kind child until he began practicing black magic, voodooism and witchcraft. He claimed to have participated in six ritualistic killings prior to his arrest. He claimed that a corpse of a one-year-old infant was thrown on a bridge after being beheaded as a sacrifice to a voodoo god. On June 25, 1990 Smith received Gilgert as his last meal, but this was not his first choice. He originally asked for Reek on Ebert, which is often associated with voodoo rituals. He explained he would use it to mark his body so that the spirit would move on and not become a ghost. Smith's was executed on the morning of June 26, 1990. In his final statement, Smith said, I myself did not kill anyone, but I go to my death without begging for my life. I will not humiliate myself. I will let no man break me. Then he smiled, winked and said, Hare Krishna. He claimed to have been a former follower of the Hare Krishna belief as well as a former voodoo priest. Smith's execution was carried out even though the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that they found enough evidence to review his case. This was the first time in recent history that such a phenomenon had occurred. 
The court's rule allowed the execution to continue despite the belief that Smith's mental state affected his ability to deny his appeals. It takes four votes to have a case reviewed and five votes to grant a stay. The courts voted five to four just before midnight, but this was not enough to halt the execution. Even though James Edward Smith is dead, many people feel that his ghost remains. Before he died, he warned prison officials that his ghost would haunt over Huntsville for another 300 years. James Edward Smith was 38 years at the time of his execution. Thank you for watching Death Row.